Hello and welcome. This is my what I've recently read slash books I read in December, January. Um, I decided to combine them because I only recently, end of last year, started reading a lot more books. Um, so I combine them because there's not too many that I've read, maybe compared to others. Um, so I combined them just to have a little bit more to share. Um, my goal is to read about three books a month and so far really going, you know, surpassing that. Um, so hopefully into February I can continue that. <laughs> but for now, I'm going to share with you some of the books I read and what I thought about them. Okay, so I hope you enjoy. Two books that I finished in December was A Court of Frost and Starlight, which is like the fourth book in the Akatar series, and then A Court of Silver Flames, which is the fifth book. So, these were great. I feel like if I had to rate them and just to make it very clear, Everyone's ratings of books is going to be different. Um, it's very subjective and um, something someone likes, someone else might not like. So these are just my personal reviews and, um, you know, find what you love. <laughs> but I enjoyed this book. It's kind of like a novella because it's very short, but it's actually I think it's important to read in the series, like you wouldn't skip over this, which has become a pattern now where novellas now become requ required reading. <laughs> um, where there used to be more of like embellishments or side stories, I feel like now you kind of have to read them to connect certain things. Um, so I don't recommend skipping this because this definitely sets up this book. And this book was okay. I think would give it like like a 3.5 I mean it was okay I wasn't it wasn't exactly like high stakes it was a cozy read but I feel like this could have just been the same book you know like we could have just combined this and that would have been not fine um, I feel like the only thing I enjoyed about both of these books was the fact you got to see Nesta's character because this book is in her point of view and I liked this book like a five. Okay, I liked it. I felt like Nesta was a flawed gray character and Cassian and her were just like, uh, I don't know, like it was good chemistry and I enjoyed the spicy part. Um, I'm just going to say whether or not a book is spicy or isn't because I don't really, I can't rate spiciness. I'm just like not that knowledgeable, <laughs> but this is pretty spicy. So I guess that is like a rating. Um, I, I, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I enjoyed Nesta. I feel like I could relate to some of her rage as a character. <laughs> Maybe that's the Sagittarius in me. I don't know. Okay, I feel like she'd be a Sagittarius or a Scorpio, something like that. I have a lot of Scorpio placements in my communication, so um, there were moments where I was like frustrated with her, but I never like deeply disliked her or found her insufferable, so that's why I like it. So it was a really good character development book and the spiciness is great. And I just love books with character development. 
moment like the plot is fine right like the fantasy of it all is great but when it comes to character development that's where I feel like I really connect with books the most um, and that's probably why I love romance the most because it's about relationships and characters so anyway and other stuff but uh, yeah really enjoyed these but I kind of feel like these could have just been one book and I would have been fine with that but obviously the author's gonna do what they're gonna do um so yeah great stuff so after I finished Akatar, I decided to hop into something a little more contemporary sometimes I do that I'll just like do fantasy contemporary just to like mix it up a little bit so I heard really good reviews about this tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow um, this is a standalone book it's about two characters who essentially kind of like are childhood friends and they grow up and decide to create a video game together and then it sort of follows their life throughout their grown up years and kind of the video game achievements that they have and that they make and just kind of their dynamic with each other and people around them the writing is a four but the story is a 2.5 for me um i just found the characters really unlikable <laughs> especially the girl character the girl's name is sadie and um the guy's name is sam and it's not a romance which was fine like i don't really need romance um although i do feel like that's the genre i enjoy the most but, you know, it's about friendship, it's about relationships, it's about, like, a different type of love, if you will. I found the Sadie character, the girl character, so unlikable. Like, I really, like, it felt like things were just happening to her, and she was like this robot, kind of, like, experiencing everything. I just didn't believe her, if that makes sense. Like, I didn't believe her. I didn't really understand her and her motives. Um, that's not really giving too much away of this book, but, um, I don't know. The writing was good. Like, it's very artsy. I feel like it's the kind of writing you, I don't know, someone's doing for their creative writing major, and they're being all artsy about it, and that's, like, awesome for that, but the story was just not, I felt sad the entire time I was writing it. Because it's not like tragic, it's not like really heavy, like violence or tragedy necessarily, but it just made me feel depressed <laughs> and not in like a hopeful kind of way. <laughs> Video game references was interesting. I felt like there were some chapters that were like a little too artsy for me, like it just went on for too long. It wasn't too artsy, it was, it was that it went on for too long felt like, I was like, okay, I get it. Like, I get what you're trying to say. Please, let's move on. <laughs> and I just felt like I couldn't really connect with it in the way that I think other people have with this book. But I, like, can objectively understand why people really love it. It just was kind of a miss for me. Mainly because of the character, Sadie. Uh, Sam was okay, the guy character. But I just felt like, I don't know, I don't know. If you love this book, I'm so happy that you love it. I'm not hating on anyone who loves books that I don't like or books I like that other people don't like. <laughs> um, we're all different and unique, but I just couldn't connect with it and that's okay. Sometimes it's just not our cup of tea. So sadly, I don't think I'm going to keep this book because I just don't think I'd ever reread it again. I'm going to probably give it away. <laughs> Sell it or something. So, um, yeah, I just, I think the whole time I was reading it, I was like hoping it would get a little more like, okay, now this all makes sense why this 
characters this way and I felt like I just was disappointed a little bit but yeah overall four on the writing two and a half on the story for me so I'm going in the order I read these books from like December into January so after Akatar, I was hitting a miss with that last you know book um, so I decided to pick up another fantasy which is Schwab, and I've heard V.E. Schwab is a very good writer. This story, to be honest, fell very flat for me. I think because I've read a lot of fantasy of all types, like some with spiciness, some with romance, some with very subtle romance, some with like heavy fantasy plot. And this was like very tangible fantasy. I feel like anyone could really read this and not get really confused like a lot of other fantasy. So in that way, it was fine. The story just, like, the plot was interesting, but that's really all it had going for it. <laughs> the characters, I wanted to like them and connect with them, but I just kind of felt like they, like, I didn't really emotionally connect. I felt like they were just like these caricatures of people a little bit. Um, so I don't know, this is tough. I gave this a three only because it was like, okay. Like it wasn't like super disappointing, but it wasn't like above average. <laughs> it's just sort of average. And that's what a three is for me. It's like an average. Um, and so I'm kind of torn because I was planning on maybe reading the rest of the series, but now I'm just like, I'm just not super interested in reading the rest of the stories. I feel like there was nothing super compelling to make me want to find out what happens next or care about the characters. Um, I don't know. That's just how I felt about it. I felt a little disappointed and you can only imagine how that I read two books in a row that I was like not loving so I was starting to get into a slump a little bit but in December I had a week off for Christmas so I pushed through and I was like you know what we're gonna keep going I'm going to find a book <laughs> that I love so after reading this I was like you know what no more you know genres that are a little like kind of not really the ones I enjoy um even though this is like a genre I enjoy it's just like felt watered down to me like one dimensional so instead I went full on romance fantasy novels for like the rest of the year because I was like I'm gonna stick with what I know tends to work so yeah that was my three stars for this. Kind of not interested in reading the rest, but I might. We'll see. I don't know. Okay, so the next book slash book series that I read is actually a series of books, and I read them very quickly, um, especially because in the beginning of January, I got sick, and so I had nothing to do. <laughs> So I decided to continue this series. So I downloaded the first book in this series back in September of 2023 and I was meant to read it like on a trip on the airplane. Um, but I only read like 5-10% of it, barely the first few chapters because we had a really terrible like travel situation so I couldn't focus on reading and enjoying so I just tabled it for a few months and returned to it in December. Let me tell you. This series reignited like the inspiration, the fever, the fervor, the fever, the fervor, the fervor for reading. This series. Okay. It's called Daughter of the Drown.
Frankie Diane Malice. Malice? Malice? Oh my gosh. This book. These books. So there is one, two, three, four, five. There are six total books. The sixth one is coming out in June. So I read the first five books uh, and then realized the sixth book is actually coming out in June and I have to wait until June and I'm very sad. These books are like fantasy romance, like the perfect balance of like an actually good story and like when I tell you slow burn trope a novella 
So it's like the first book is Daughter of the Drowned Empire. The second one is Guardian of the Drowned Empire. And then the third one is technically like a novella. Um, it's called Solstice of the Drowned Empire, but you have to read it before you read the next book because it totally spoils stuff. But it's in the point of view of the um, romantic partner um, and his perspective. And when you a fan. It doesn't swap POVs in the first couple books. Like, it doesn't do that. Um, in the first two books. And then the third book is through his point of view of, like, like a side story, technically. Um, but it's still important. Like, it still kind of gives away certain motives and, like, backstory. And his point of view, I was like, at first, I was like, do we need this? But, yes. Hearing his point of view made me fall more deeply emotionally connected to his character and made the rest of the series way more rich and intense and um, just quite literally had me hooked. Frankie, you know what you're doing, girl. Thank you. Um, the last book I read was Lady of the Drowned Empire, which continues like the main character's arc. And I loved that book. The only thing is it does have a POV switch with, like, another character. Not the romantic partner, but a different one. And I felt like that was kind of like, at first I was like, do we need this? But then by the end of the book, I was like, okay. It was needed. <laughs> but I like it because it's not like you're jumping from, like, a lot of POVs, which I tend to just like one or two at the most. Um, and then there's another novella which is right after Lady of the Drowned Empire and it's Son of the Drowned Empire, which is again the romantic interest. Again, like a side story, backstory. But I'm so excited to read it because I love his point of view and I, I love his character, so it's like not a nuisance to read it, if that makes sense. The series makes me feel like the soundtrack, like when you read it, the soundtrack of Pirates of the Caribbean, you know what I'm saying? Like that emotional, just yearning and like burning, like that is literally the feeling I get when I read these books. Fives for all of them, maybe like a 4.7 because of the character POV switch in the fourth book, but like honestly fives, literally all of them, fives. Every book I was like, So like the entire series. So this literally saved, I think it's just called the Drowned Empire series, <laughs> saved my book slump and so good. I cannot recommend it enough. I downloaded it on Kindle. I don't have like the physical books, but I love them so much that I'm probably going to buy the physical copies um, because that's like, it's funny because I like, I bought these physical books that I had never read and I didn't like them. So now I have to get rid of them. And then I downloaded books that I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like it. And I love them, so now I want to get the physical copies. Um, but yeah, these are, so, this is such a good series. It's so good. Okay, I spent like five million years on that book. It, by the way, the series, the Drowned Empire series is, has some spice, but it's not until like later in the series, if that makes sense, because it is slow. It's awesome. And there are, again, like, some instances of, like, violence that you should be aware of, but it's not, thankfully, like, it wasn't too much for me to bear, like, I could bear it, essentially. Anyway, so, okay. Back to a physical book. <laughs> um, so... for this book a long time ago, like a couple years ago, and I bought it, and I just like haven't, haven't picked it up, haven't read it, because I just haven't been reading very much in the last couple years, as much as I would like, but I decided to go for it, I felt in the mood. It's kind of like Outlander, but for like young adults, if that makes sense, so way more, like definitely PG, if you will. Um, this 
is not spicy whatsoever. But I, again, I don't need spicy. I just need good romance, like, in chemistry and emotional characters and, like, excitement. I was reading this at the same time I was reading uh, Daughter of the Drowned Empire. And this I read in, like, an afternoon. Evening. I finished it. It's called Dune. And it's about two girls who
this book of five and I loved it so much that I was like, you know what? I'm gonna buy the rest of the books and just just let the books speak for themselves, right? Like I can kind of separate myself from like who the authors are a little bit and just like enjoy the story. But like even doing that, even though there's no specific references to the religion, there are still such subtle metaphors that I can understand do relate to it that it's really hard now for me to separate the story from like the religion, if that makes sense. And it's very distracting. Like I'm not sitting here like, oh my gosh, but it's, it's just distracting. is not romantic to me. Um, I didn't even feel like there was enough of it. Honestly, I felt like it was a little slow. I felt like this could have been a five minute story and it felt kind of prolonged and I just wasn't given any morsels that I, that I felt I got in the first book. Um, and I feel like there was so much opportunity to have those chemistry moments and I felt like it really felt
So now I'm torn if I should continue the series. I think I might just, just cause. But I'm also not afraid to just like DNF the rest of the series. It just sucks that like the first book was so great and then it got really complicated and I think I tried to really separate myself from the like metaphors. <laughs> this to 
kind of understand the world, but you don't necessarily have to, although it would make more sense. So, um, I enjoyed it for what it was and it, I had already bought it like over a year ago. So I just decided to read it and I'll probably read the next one. I think it's called Wicked something. I don't know. Um, but there's like a third one and it might be on a different kind of glad this was about a different character and I enjoyed it and that is what it is. I would give this book a four mainly because like the spice is definitely like up there but sometimes you need a little bit more than that. Like I definitely think I need balance of like a good story and spice and I feel like there's a lot of books that do that really well with the balance of both. Like a court of silver flames. I felt like that was a good balance. Um, yeah. Anyways, that is my last book that I read. Um, I feel like this was incredibly long. <laughs> so, those are all the books I read in December and January. Um, some were not. romance and contemporary. 